Okay, Bible and Daily Lifers, here we are. We are going through the New Testament in a year. And we're in Luke chapter 22, where we get to the Passover and what we call communion in the New Testament, or the Lord's Supper, or the Last Supper, or the Lord's Table. But let's read about it and see what we can learn about Passover and this idea of what we call communion or the Lord's Table. Chapter 22, verse 1. Now, the festival of unleavened bread, unleavened bread, what does that mean? It means bread without yeast. You have a festival, uh, bread without yeast, called the Passover. Oh, we'll get to that, the Passover. It was approaching. And the chief priests and the teachers of the law were looking for some way to get rid of Jesus, for they were afraid of the people. Well, because the people are going with Jesus and the religious leaders want to get rid of him, so it's a real dilemma for them. How are they going to get rid of Jesus and still keep the favor of the people? Verse 3, well, then Satan entered Judas, called Iscariot, one of the twelve. And Judas went to the chief priests and the officers of the temple guard and discussed with them how they might betray Jesus. Let's come up with a plan. Let's come up with a plot. Well, they were delighted to hear this, and they agreed to give him money. And he consented, he's going to take the money, take the deal, and watch for an opportunity to hand Jesus over to them when no crowd was present. Oh, right, they're not going to do it when the people are around because the people are going to freak out. So they're going to find a quiet place, a secret place to do this. They're going to do it in what's called the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus is out there praying with his disciples. Verse 7, the day of the unleavened bread came on which the Passover lamb had to be sacrificed. And Jesus sent Peter and John, and he said, go and make preparations for us to eat this Passover. Well, what is this about Passover? Well, this is a Jewish festival that goes all the way back in their history. What had happened was, uh, in Genesis 12, God calls a man named Abraham, and he tells him he's going to make all these promises to him. He's going to make his name great. He's going to give him a land. And all of the nations of the earth are going to be blessed through him, through Jesus, the Messiah. Jesus would come through his family tree, through his lineage. When he makes these promises to him in Genesis 12 and Genesis 15, he tells him that at some point your people are going to be in bondage for 400 years. Well, it happened exactly as God had said. Abraham's family, they had grown quite large to about 70 that's a pretty big family, right, of kids and grandkids and great-grandkids. They'd grown to about 70. There was a famine in the land where they were, and they went down to Egypt to escape the famine. Well, once they went down into Egypt, and you know how it is. You plan on maybe going away to college for four years and then coming back to your community, and you never come back. You just sort of settle in that other area. Well, they never came back. They stayed in Egypt, and then they ended up being slaves in Egypt for 400 years. In the book of Exodus, which means coming out, the book of Exodus, they were crying out to God, and God heard their cry, and he delivers them. How is he going to deliver them from bondage? How is he going to deliver them from slavery? How is he going to give them brand new life and bring them into the promised land? He's going to do it through the blood of a lamb, a blood of the lamb. Well, what happened was they were all supposed to take a lamb, each to their family. They were to take an innocent lamb and they were to make sure that that lamb was without defect and that lamb would come and live with them for a little while. Well, that's what Jesus did. It said he came and he tabernacled with us for a little while. He stayed with us for a little while and we watched him. And what they were to do was to take the lamb into their house and they were to look at this lamb and make sure that it was a lamb without defect. And if it was, then they would slay that lamb and the innocent would take the place of the guilty. You see, the innocent death of the lamb would take their place. What was going to happen is God was going to judge Egypt. He was going to send the angel of death in. And if you had the blood on your door, here's what he told them to do. Take the lamb, slay the lamb, take the blood of that lamb. And they would take it on this tree, this sort of tree branch, and then splash it on your doorpost three times. And that when the angel of death, the angel of judgment comes... When the angel sees the blood, he said, I will pass over you. Well, that's what happens to us. 
when we take the blood of the lamb, Jesus Christ, he's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords, he's the lamb of lambs, he's the final lamb. He's the sacrifice lamb, sacrificed for us. He's the innocent one who dies for us, the guilty. He's God himself. He's God in the flesh. He's the perfect one. And he dies for us. And so this picture of the Passover is, is how we end up being delivered, how we end up being saved. We put our faith in the fact that if we trust the slain blood of the lamb, we'll be saved. And so it is the same with Jesus. If we trust in the, sl the slain blood of the lamb, we'll be saved. So the Passover. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Well, let's keep reading this account here. And they said, where do you want us to prepare this? They would do this every year. And Jesus said, as you enter the city, there will be a man carrying a jar of water, and he'll meet you. Follow him to the house that he enters, and say to the owner of the house, the teacher asks, where's the guest room where I might eat the Passover with my disciples? He'll show you a large room upstairs, all furnished, make the preparations there. So apparently Jesus had already prearranged this, and the guy sees them and meets them, and uh, they're going up to this house. They're going to have the Passover together. They left and they found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover there. When the hour came, well, Jesus said that I came for this hour. When the hour came, Jesus and his disciples reclined at the table. Uh, they didn't sit in chairs like we do. They'd actually sit on the floor and kind of recline on your arm. Sometimes you'd lean into somebody else and lean on them. And he said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. Jesus eating with his disciples. And he's going to suffer. What's he going to suffer? He's going to suffer the cross. For I tell you, I will not eat it again until it finds its fulfillment in the kingdom of God. Jesus will have another feast with us in the kingdom of God, in the next life, in the hereafter, in heaven. We'll eat with him. And after taking the cup, this was their custom, they would take the cup, and uh, the cup has the wine in it, representative of the blood of Jesus. Now in the New Testament we understand this. He took the cup and he gave thanks. That word there is Eucharist. So if you grew up in a liturgical church, you might remember that they use that word Eucharist. And a lot of people think that the Eucharist is the element, the the bread in the cup, but it's not. It means the giving of thanks. And so Jesus gives thanks. And he said, take this and divide it among you. For I tell you, I will not drink from the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. It's not going to do it again until he returns and we do it with him in the kingdom. And then he took the bread, gave thanks, and he broke it. And he said, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. That's why if you go to a church, they take the bread and they take the cup. And what are we doing? We're doing it in remembrance of Jesus. Remembering what? We're remembering that night, certainly. But we're also remembering his death. We're remembering that he died for us. But we're also remembering, of course, that he rose again. And we do this in remembrance of Jesus, what he's done. We need to constantly be reminding ourselves of what Jesus has done for us. It's such a great thing. Bringing us salvation. Bringing us out of that old life bringing us out of slavery, and bringing us where? Into a land that's flowing with milk and honey, bringing us into a new life. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, the new covenant, the new agreement, the new way that it's going to work. It won't be by works. It won't be by trying to gain God's favor. It won't be by rituals. It won't by, be by keeping rituals. It's it's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses us from all sin. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Jesus pouring out his blood for us. But the hand of him who's going to betray me is here at the table. The Son of Man will go as is decreed, but woe to the man who betrays him. And they began to question, which one of, it, of us is it? Well, Jesus is going to die. And this communion that we take, this bread in this cup, it goes all the way back to the Passover feast in the book of Exodus when they were slaves for 400 years. And God told them, take an innocent lamb, make sure it's a perfect lamb, and, 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 and take it from the sheep or the goats from, from among us. And take that lamb, that innocent lamb, 
and slay it. Take the blood, put it on the doorpost, put it on the doorpost of your heart. And, and when the angel of judgment comes through, I will pass over you because you see the blood. Made righteous, made holy, cleansed, delivered, given new life through the blood of the Lamb. And so, uh, you know, as we join with believers, and if you don't join with believers, uh, find some believers to join with and, and to share the bread and to share the cup in remembrance of Jesus. And maybe even if you would attend online, uh, when, when they do the bread and the cup, you can do the bread and the cup where you are at home. So uh, the Passover and communion, the Lord's table, the Last Supper, there's the connection right there. And so read the, the rest of Luke 22, and we'll continue to go on through the New Testament in a year one chapter a day, Monday through Friday, and you'll do the whole New Testament in a year. Hey, bless you guys. Love you guys. Find us where you find us. Hey, bless you.